Hey guys, so it's Easter Sunday. I'm here with my friends and we're brewing a beer. Today we are brewing a Citra Dry Hop Lager and for the first time ever, I'm using Kvaik yeast. So if you're interested, stay tuned. What's going on, beer lovers? Welcome to another episode. I'm Jeff. I'm Mia. And I'm Jacob. And uh, we're all here today because we're going to brew the first beer at my new place. Woo! And uh, honestly, I've been waiting a long time to brew another lager. I just hate waiting for the fermentation time, the time it takes to actually lager the beer in the fridge, all that kind of stuff. I've been really interested in using Kvike yeast in a home brew. I hear a lot of good things about it, but I've never actually used it. So after doing a ton of research, it looks like this might be the beer to do it on. Uh, I'm hoping that this ferments out in only a few days versus a few weeks uh, so I can get to drinking it because the weather in California is getting really nice and sunny uh, and I need some crispy boy goodness. So anyways, we got our strike water going. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ingredients. everyone our strike water is ready i'm reunited with my favorite paddle in the whole wide world aside from a kayak paddle and we're going to add in the malt you ready yeah all right okay Ooh. it's gonna smell like cereal in a second oh yeah oh shit i missed the ball Don't mind Mia, she's just looking like a rock star, doing her thing. Very serious work. Getting them clumpy clumps out. The professional term, clumpy clumps. All right, so mashing has started. Uh, our strike temperature was 165-ish degrees. We actually accidentally left the spout on in the mash tun, so we lost some water, had to heat some more up, and then put it in. Uh, good news is, is after mashing in, check the mash temperature. It is at 150 degrees exactly. Uh, so I'm really stoked about that. And now we just set our timer for 60 minutes. One hour later. All right, guys. So our mashing is done. Uh, I'm going to recirculate the wort. Just make sure it's nice and clear using this little pot here. And we actually have some sparge water heating up as well. So probably seen this a thousand times before. This is nothing new. Uh, just kind of lightly turn on the hose. If you get in there real tight, you can see all the little particles and pieces of beer. We don't want that, so we're going to pour it back in and do this cycle over and over again until it runs clear. <laughs> All right, so we've completely mashed out. Uh, that was really fun. Uh, I actually had a stuck sparge, basically just went in there with the mash paddle again, uh, cleared it up, recirculated the wort, and then kept the process going. Uh, we have seven gallons. It's sitting on the burner right now. We're gonna raise that to a boil, and then we start our hop additions. All right, the boil has begun. So I'm gonna drop in our hops. It is Citro Lupomax. I'm just gonna pour it on in. Ooh, look at that. I'm doing it here. Yep. Ooh, fun. All right. I'm excited. 
excited. This took a minute, so <laughs> we've we've had uh, we've had some beers. So now now we get to do something. I got to do something. Boys aren't doing anything. All right guys, we have 15 more minutes on the boil. Now I should mention, we did have to switch over uh, propane tanks because our last one did kill out. Um, we had a lot of little tiny issues this uh, brew day, but I don't think they're gonna make a, much of a difference in the final product. I um, just wanna let you guys know how everything was going. Right now I'm gonna put in the yeast nutrient. Get a little add in there. I'm gonna throw in one tablet of the Warfluck. If I can get it out. How do you get these out? Maybe you, oh, shake it into yeah. your hand. I want more warp block going in there, and that splash on my foot. That was really hot. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, and then we're actually going to put in one pound of corn sugar. So that's going to just boost up the ABV a little bit. More good stuff for the uh, yeast to consume. Here we go. guys our boil is finished uh, the boil ended up lasting about 75 minutes instead of 60 because one of our propane tanks died uh, the boil stopped had to get it back going so don't know where our volumes at mistakes are always gonna happen when you brew you just got to kind of keep going uh, so now we're ready to chill down the wort put in my wort chiller sanitized it in the last few minutes of the boil everything's hooked up to my sink we're actually going to lower the temperature down to 170 at that point, we're actually going to do a hop addition called the Whirlpool. We're going to leave it sitting in there for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then we'll chill it down to pitching temp. Here we go. Like magic. Magic. All right, so now we're going to be adding an ounce of citra, and because Jeff had a bunch of it, Figured why not add a little half ounce of Sabro. We'll spice things up a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And whoop, right into the hop spider. Cool, and now we just let it uh, cool down a little bit more. La, 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 la. All right, so I forgot to tell Jacob, he just added the hops into here. Um, we are doing a whirlpool, but we're also doing a hop stand. So the temperature inside of here with the wort is about 170 degrees. We're gonna let these hops sit in 170 degree temperature wort for the next 20 minutes. Then we're gonna keep the wort chiller going. We're gonna cool it down to pitching temp. So that's what we're doing right now. All right, so we have chilled down the wort. We got it down to 68 degrees, which is our pitching temperature. I could have done it a little bit higher, but to be honest with you, uh, that wort chiller just worked beautifully. I also made sure to measure the gravity and that's, that's kind of where the shocker was. I was going for 1050. Um, the gravity ended up being about 1042, so we are definitely a few points shy. However, this is supposed to be a lager, so if it's really light, I'm not mad at it. And uh, I still don't know what this uh, Lutra yeast is going to do. Um, yeah, who knows? So anyways, we are going to go ahead and pour the wort into our sanitized fermenter, and then I'm going to aerate it. Make sure you sanitize the outside of the yeast bag. Don't want anything weird getting in there. Unless it's an otter. Otters are okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird looking otter though. Yeah. All right, and we dump her in. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob did not do that slow at all. Uh, I wish I was shooting at 60 frames a second. Maybe I could try to do a slow-mo, and you guys would see it a little faster, but it doesn't matter. It's all going to the same place. All right, so now we pitched our yeast. The wort's in there ready to go. This has been sanitized and cleaned off. I'm just fastening the top of this. All right, guys, so airlock is going on. Sorry, trying to flick out that top thing, man. It's always such a pain. There we go. 
Boom. We're done. Cool. Well, guys, brew day is done. Um, we had quite a few hiccups today, but you know what? When it comes to home brewing, it's bound to happen. Um, I would always say the more prepared you are, the less mistakes you made. I just kind of threw this together uh, last minute and didn't really plan ahead too much. Plus, new location. So yeah, that was a big one, I think. That, that yeah. definitely plays into it a little bit. Plus, it's been almost six months, I think, since I brewed. Mm. So it's been a while as well. I'm a little rusty. But we do have wort in a fermenter and yeast. Now, the good news is, is that this yeast is supposed to create a very vigorous fermentation. It should only take a few days. I am not keeping this cool. I'm actually just gonna let it run at ambient temperatures. Uh, so if it gets hot, great. Um, and if it starts getting cold at night, I do have a heater, so I'll probably put that on it. But my goal is to keep it anywhere between like 75 to 85 degrees, somewhere around there. So uh, once it's done fermenting for the most part, you guys will see me do a dry hop. That'll be a real quick one. And then I'm going to keg this bad boy, and uh, then we'll try it. So yeah. that's it for brew day. We'll see you soon. Guys, check this out. This is literally 24 hours after brew day, man. This Lutri yeast is no joke. Um, pro tip, definitely get a blow-off tube if you are brewing with this yeast strain because, uh, oops, I did not realize it would be this vigorous of a fermentation. Hey guys, welcome back. So it's Saturday morning. It's been almost a week since brew day. The beer's chugging along. First couple days were absolutely nuts. It was a very vigorous fermentation. Where we're at right now, I just tested the gravity. It's day six. It's still got a little ways to go, but it is tasting incredible. Um, it's still a little sweet, that's the only thing, but the actual beer itself is tasting mighty fine. Um, it's also time for our dry hop edition. So here I have one ounce of Sabro hops and half an ounce of Citra hops with uh, some marbles in there. Pro tip, add marbles in your hop bags and they'll sink to the bottom to ensure that your beer gets all that hops out of it. Um, I decided to go with more Sabro even though that was like a last minute hop edition idea because the way that the beer's tasting now, I feel like Sabro would actually complement it a lot better than extra citra hops. Plus my citra hops is actually a uh, Lupo Max Citra, which is twice as potent as your standard citra hop variety. Um, so half an ounce is actually closer to like an ounce. So I basically have like an ounce of Sabro and an ounce of citra hops in there. Either way, I'm just gonna lightly open up the top of the fermenter, drop this in, close it back up, and we'll see you in a few more days. Cheers. Hey everyone, welcome back. It is actually April 17th. It's been roughly two weeks since brew day. Uh, you guys probably just saw me do the dry hop edition about a week in. I decided to give this beer another week to do its thing. The gravity was not at the level that I wanted. Um, I definitely would say that I attribute that to fermenting at about 74 degrees throughout fermentation. This Lutra yeast definitely ferments faster at higher temperatures from what I've seen in other people's homebrew videos. Uh, but two weeks did it really, really good, guys. I actually got the gravity down to 10.02. Um, that's perfect. That literally lands our beer at 5.25%, which was my original target. So despite everything, despite all the stupid mistakes, we're right where we wanted to be. So now it's time to keg our beer. So I'm actually doing a closed loop transfer to minimize oxygen. I have my CO2 tank running to the top of my fermenter. And then I have a spigot with a connection to my beer line that's gonna run directly into the keg, which is out of frame. But basically what this does is I don't have to open anything for the fermenter um, and I can create a counter flow by pushing CO2 from the top which will push the beer out. If this closed loop transfer thing is something that you guys are interested in, let me know in the comments below. I'll show you how I do it. Otherwise, there's tons of people on YouTube 
that have their instructional videos. I kind of did my own little Jimmy rig thing. It seems to be working out for me great. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my CO2, open the spigot, run the beer into the beer line. Then I just put it into the kegerator and give it time to rest and carbonate. And then we drink it. So here we go. Whew. All right, so beer's kegged. It is actually cold crashing right now. Tomorrow, I'm gonna add some gelatin to it. This is gonna help clarify the beer a little bit. Uh, I'm not vegan, so I figure I want some clear, crushable beer. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that tomorrow. I'm not gonna show that part, but I will see you guys when this beer is ready, which is gonna be in about seven to 10 days. So I'll see you then. Several days later. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The homebrew is finally complete. Jacob and I just poured ourselves a couple pints. Uh-huh. Uh, and what are your thoughts, Jacob? I mean, looks good. It's pretty clear, not like super crystal clear. It's got a little bit of a dark tint to it. Great head, nice and fluffy. Yeah, I poured these off about a minute or two ago, and his is sticking around quite well. Mine's yeah. slowly dissipating, but it's still it's, there. It's like a fingers full of head. Yeah. Um, Clarity-wise, you're absolutely right. I, I have had this lagering for about 10 days at this point. Um, it, it clarified quite a bit, it's and it pretty probably cool, yeah. will clarify more, um, but without any fancy filtration or anything, I mean, I, I'm pretty happy Looks with good. this. Yeah. yeah. Um, Color-wise, I dig it. It's got kind of like a golden hue to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so not you go. quite amber. It's definitely lighter than, you know, like an amber, but it's... Hmm. Kind of flirting with that color. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, nice aroma. You know, it smells a little malty, but there's definitely like some nice, kind of like fruity, juicy hops going on. Yeah, you're definitely getting some of that citra in there. Um, the Sabro, I'm not getting so much on the nose. I don't get like coconut or anything. No. But I will say the uh, citra is definitely coming through just that bright light orange lemon peel that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it kind of smells like a, like a hoppy pale. Yeah, yeah, like a hoppy pale. That's what I'd say. Um, I'm All right. getting thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. It's pretty satisfying. Oh, that's one of those like, take a big gulp of it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or chug it, because I did do that the other night. <laughs> yeah, this is it's pretty chuggable. Um, you know, it really does remind me of kind of a hot pale. Uh, there's something like kind of pale ale about it. I know you were kind of aiming for more of a lager. There's something a bit more full with a mouthfeel, and maybe just like that kind of hint of hops that's reminding me a little bit more of like a light pale ale. Um, not a bad thing at all. No. Like, it's actually really good for... It still meets that hot summer weather kind of beer, right? Like a light pale ale is in that same range, at least for me, of, you know, it's becoming summer in California and you want something lower ABV. And, right, what was ABV? At, what did it end up with? The ABV actually finished at 5.25%. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into this brew process again. So I just want to remind you guys in case you forgot from the beginning of the episode... We used uh, Kvaik Lutra yeast, which actually is not a lager yeast. <laughs> However, okay. a lot of people have been brewing with this yeast strain and gotten very similar lager-ish okay. vibes. Okay. Uh, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to try it out. The other was the fact that it's supposed to just rip through fermentation super quick. Uh, I didn't have that experience. It did take like the normal fermentation time. Okay. It ripped the first two days, but then it kind of mellowed out. And I'm hmm. gonna I'm gonna say that the reason why is because it was only fermenting at about seventy three degrees. Right. It did end up dropping lower than kind of what you would normally do with a kvike. It didn't. It didn't hang around ninety degree basically. We were like yeah. in the middle of a heat wave, yeah. so I was like, "This is a perfect time to brew a kvike beer." And then the heat wave ended, and it was nice and cool for like two weeks. Yeah. So here we are. Um, after a week, I did check it, and uh, the gravity was not where I wanted it to be. It was looking like it was going to be like a three and a half percent beer. Um, and then after another week, I mean, of just being patient, letting it do its thing, it. Ended up finishing out at 10.02, which puts it at the 5.25. 
Um, I will say you're absolutely right. This isn't quite lager beer for me. That could be the recipe, that could be my brew process. This is literally the second lager beer I've ever made. True. Yeah. So it could be it could be that. Yeah. Um, I also think that the hops take on a special character in this beer that kind of shift you away from the feeling of a lager. It's still light, bright, and crispy like a yeah. lager, but you got like a like a malt and hop presence where they kind of play with each other in the way that you would get out of a pale ale. Yeah, like if I'm trying to be, you know a bit more of a strong critiquer of your beer. Best thing I can tell you is you didn't quite make a lager, but you made a delicious pale ale. <laughs> there you um, go. <laughs> you know, which I think tends to happen in homebrew, right? Like that's kind of the fun part of homebrewing is maybe you don't quite make your target, but you end up making something else that's usually, not always, but usually it's still tasty. Um, in this case, it's a tasty pale, not the original intent, but like, we going to finish it. <laughs> yeah. And it's not really going to be very difficult. Um, what else would I say? I think it might have been nice to be a little bit more, like, crisp breadiness. Mm -hmm. That's just usually my um, preferred type of lager. So I was actually talking to uh, Windsor Homebrew Supply when I picked up the yeast strain. Right, right. And one of the things that they said is the reason why we wouldn't call this a lager strain is it actually accentuates the hops more. Okay. It gives more more fruity flavors, fruity esters, mm. and less of that bright, crispy, snappy, oh, okay, ready okay. kind of yeah, 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 yeah. finish. That I'd be looking for. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm sure you could use this yeast strain and really build a really tightly made recipe that could achieve that flavor. Hmm. But to be honest with you, I'm a lazy home brewer. I just throw my recipes together while I'm taking it. Like, <laughs> I don't put as much effort as some people do. Uh, I just do my grains, do my hops, do my brew day, and that's about it. So um, I'm sure you could perfect this. I know that there's a couple things I would like to do differently on this. Um, the pH was much lower than what I wanted. I was aiming for about 5.4 to 5.6, and it was like 5.1 or 4.9, somewhere around there. So it's a little lower. Um, I don't think that necessarily affected anything too much. It could have. Let me know in the comments below if you know a lot about, you know, pH levels and how it might have affected my brew. Um, the other thing is uh, the malt profile. Mm. I, I think I would want to add maybe some more honey malt to it or something like that to really okay. sweeten yeah. it up. Um, and... Yeah, I want to ferment this at a high temperature. So mm. I might actually try another Lutra homebrew this summer when it gets a lot hotter. Yeah. And we'll just see how fast we can get the sucker to ferment out. Uh, because to be honest with you, even though this isn't ideally like what I was looking for, Jacob already said it, this is quite a Pretty drinkable tasty. beer. And at 5.25, I can drink a bunch of them and not worry. And... Uh, I've already gone through almost half the keg myself, so <laughs> that might be an inclination. Really, that was me testing for clarity, or, or at least that's what I'm going to say it's for. So, yeah. Um, any final notes? Uh, no, I would say that this was a really good uh, trial of you using Quebec yeast. I think now that you've done this, it's going to be that much easier to do another beer with Quebec yeast, and then do another, and do another. Um, now that it's kind of a little demystified, right? Yeah. Like, it's less threatening. Yeah. And the more I do loggers too, the more comfortable I'm getting with them. Exactly. Yeah. Like even, I think the big worry when you try something like a lager is that if you f*** up, it'll be gross. And I would say you probably missed your original target and you ended up with something pretty tasty. And that's a very encouraging <laughs> thing to mm -hmm. end up happening, right? It's like, rather than you losing a keg, you've just have a different cake, <laughs> you know, and that's going to make the next time that much easier for you to do. So I'm excited. Absolutely. Well, guys, that is your grain to glass tutorial of this uh, Kvaik Lutra lager-ish beer. <laughs> uh, again, I use Cryo Hop Citra and Sabro Hops uh, in Whirlpool and Dry Hop. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up. Share with your friends. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon so you know when new episodes come out. 
I'm telling you guys, it means a lot. It helps us in the rankings and it encourages us to make more episodes like this one. If you've had experience brewing with this Kvaik strain, please let me know in the comments below any tips you have or just your experience in general with it. I had a lot of fun brewing with it. I definitely want to try it again at higher temperatures because man, when it was ripping, it was ripping. So yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to try this beer again. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jacob. And we'll see you again on Let's, Let's Have, have some, some Beer. beer. Cheers. Welcome back, beer nerds. Today, you thought we loved IPAs? Well, guess what? We have a mega IPA at 14.5%. Strap on your big boy pants. It's gonna mess us up. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna die!